God has a very interesting way of humbling us. And some of us take more than one thump on the head to understand the lesson that's taught. My name is Kevin Griffin. I am 42 years old. I am married and have three children. I grew up with pretty strong Catholic upbringing, so I, I had the foundation there. But then as a rebellious teenager, I, I fell away from the faith and just started doing my own will. I had a child 10 days after I turned 17. So I was a scared teenager trying to raise a child, trying to instill all of those things and not really knowing what those things were. But when I was growing up, I had a lot of expectations for myself. I came from a police family. I always thought that it would be noble and honorable to follow in the footsteps of you know, my grandfather and my father and several of my uncles. When I had a child at 17, that kind of derailed some of my plans and I didn't get to go to college like I had originally intended to. And then several years after, I did end up becoming a police officer. My expectations were that I would succeed my father in, in rank and those plans were uh, changed. I had to resign from the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department because of my alcoholism. My grandfather started on the police department on St. Patrick's Day of 1941 and somebody from my family has worn that uniform ever since. So just to be told that I couldn't do that was a pretty gut-wrenching experience. I still didn't learn my lesson because I continued to drink and didn't think it was a problem. And so he gave me another opportunity when I got fired from another police job. I knew I needed help, but I didn't know where to turn to get it. I met TN 2014 and I was I was not well. I was still dealing with a lot of things that I had left left on the table from my previous marriage, things that I didn't address. I guess she had the sobriety to know that something was wrong with me. So she encouraged me to get some help. I knew that I couldn't do that alone. I almost witnessed Tia die after the birth of our daughter, Reese. She was in a coma for 10 days. I was drunk the entire time because I didn't know how to how to handle that situation. There was that period of time where at least face a, a possibility that I'd be raising a, a brand new baby without a mother. And that was one of the scariest realities that I had to deal with in my life. Through the grace of God, she's still here. Her waking up from that and seeing what she went through, and persevering gave me the strength and the confidence to become a different and better version of myself. Tia was definitely the, the driving force behind us seeking out Pathfinder. We tried several other churches and then found Pathfinder. As soon as I started here at Pathfinder, they started with the pop-ups and joining a disaster uh, response pop-up that uh, we had the opportunity to go and help some folks down in southern Missouri that were affected by a tornado. Any event that I'm called to uh, come to, I, I show up and I'm ready to work. The calling God has, I would say, is to serve others. I think it's his calling for all of us. Every day I, I wake up, and take a breath, and say thank you for this breath. Thank you for this day that you've provided me. And now what can I do to serve your will? I was full of shame and, and regret, remorse over things and actions that I was solely responsible for. It wasn't until I addressed those negative emotions and acknowledged them and made peace with my past that I was able to move forward into the present and be present. I stopped living with these future expectations of myself. I look for opportunities to serve continually because I know that through my service is my displaying acts of goodwill towards other people. Uh, right now I'm head of security for Peter and Paul Community Campus. It's a homeless services provider in St. Louis. I'm responsible for developing a, an environment that is hospitable to people who most of society is inhospitable too. I get to encounter people who are right down in the pit. I look at it as an opportunity to serve others and to model the behavior that Christ Jesus wants for our lives. And the closer that I can model his actions, I know that I'm getting closer to the glory of God.
Well, if we haven't met before, my name is Dion, and I'm the senior pastor here. And I, I love this weekend every year. It's so close to my heart. I've lost track. I don't know if this is our 10th inspired service or, or somewhere around there. Um, but such a such an incredible such an incredible weekend. And and I, I love people who are courageous enough to share their stories. So often we only want to share the good parts, the the bright shiny, happy parts of our stories. And so I love people who are willing to, to share the more vulnerable or difficult parts of their stories. And, and I just love the stories this week. And I love, I love Cammie being on, honest about her, her struggle um, after the death of her father. And, and, and more, I, I love the testimony of her, of her belief in the power of the church to transform you. Whether that's through the word of God, I, I love that when she's like, people just think you can go to church and you can be the same. Nope. <laughs> nope. If you're listening to the word of God, you will change. And if you're in community, you will change. And, and I loved hearing the, uh, just having an up close front row seat to, to the Mastic family's journey over the last two and a half years. Uh, I, I love hearing their testimony and, and, and knowing behind the scenes that being a part of a church community makes such a difference. And again, there's, there's some of us who just kind of think church is something you do and you come in and you go out and, and you miss the chance to develop relationships. Um, but those relationships, these relationships that are here waiting for you, they may mean the difference between moving through a really nightmare season in your life and, and doing it in coming through it in one piece versus coming to pieces. And I, I just love that, I love that reminder Gosh, Donna's story, huh? I mean, for most of us, that's, that's our worst nightmare, to lose your entire family. And, and I love the reminder that this is this family of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, that's, that's just more than words. It's reality. We are bonded together by something deeper, deeper than even blood or DNA. We're bound together by the blood of Jesus and, and, and we're washed in Jesus and, and that makes us family. And, and, and I, every time I've seen this video, it's been a couple times now, I get choked up at the end when she says, I've lost my son. And God lost his son for us. If, if he would do that for me, is there anything, is there anything that he would withhold? Is there anything that he wouldn't do for you? And from a woman who's gone through that, it's just powerful testimony, isn't it? And, and I love Kevin's story. I, I just love the honesty of his story. And, and I love this man who's, whose whole trajectory in life was derailed by some bad choices he made in life. How it didn't stop him from pursuing a life of purpose in it. And it still does. And I, I love this weekend. I'd encourage you to go back and, and watch these stories again. Because every time I watch, there's something new that I pick up. And God speaks into my life in a new way. Um, I also love the, the music of this weekend. Aren't we blessed by such great musicians? Yeah. Whoever started applause over there, remember that when I'm done preaching, okay? Bring some of that back. No. I, I love the music. I, I, I love that song that we sang a, a few moments ago about how uh, Christ is our firm foundation and he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't fail. And I believe that to my toes, but there are moments in life where I need to remember that, you know? Where you're in the middle of it and you're just like, am I gonna get through? Is, is God gonna fail me this time? And, and even though I know he won't, there's something about singing that song that just anchors me on the foundation of his faithfulness. And then um, I love, I love the, the, just the end of the old hymn that we sang, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I loved that song since I was a kid, and I still love it. And I, I don't know if you realize this, but these words, great is thy faithfulness, they, uh, they actually come from scripture, like a lot of our songs do. And the scripture that they come from is uh, Lamentations chapter three. Uh, here's how these words go. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, 
for his compassions. And, and sometimes this is translated mercies like in the song, but compassions. And this is a tricky word to translate from Hebrew into English because when we talk about mercy, we think about a feeling. Or when we talk about compassion, we, we think about a feeling, an emotion. But God doesn't feel things without acting on them. Right? right? We can feel compassion and do nothing. We can feel mercy and not respond. We can feel love and not show it. God cannot do that. God is so integrated in his being that, that if there's a feeling, it comes out in action. So when we say we are not consumed for his compassions or his mercies never fail, we're talking about tangible acts of mercy. We're talking about tangible acts of compassion. A, a million little miracles following us all the days of our life. And so Jeremiah the prophet, who wrote these words, says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions, these tangible acts of his goodness. They they never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Right out of scripture, you hear the song. And I want to ask you today, do, do you believe that these words are true, generally? More important, I want to ask you, do you believe that these words are true for you? Do you believe that God's mercies, his compassions, those, those tangible acts of love and goodness, do you believe that they're new for you today and tomorrow and every day? Do you believe that even as you sit here today, if you've been baptized in his name and his spirit lives in you, do you believe that as you just sit here today, that he is doing something in you, that he is making you new? Apart from your participation or knowing, he's, he's at work in your life making you new. Do you believe that's true? If you do, it's a powerful way to live. It's a hopeful way to live. But so often, that's not the way we live. There, there's another way we live, and, and we live with the thought or the thinking. It sounds something like this. Well, here we are. Another inspired service. Another weekend where we look at people's stories of life change and we hear about how God's at work in people's lives and he's making them new and he's doing new things in their lives. And yet here I am, here I am sitting here, same old problems, same old difficulties, same old aches and pains, same old stresses, same roadblocks, same temptations and hurts conflicts, same old me. Like you've ever fall victim to this kind of thinking, especially on a weekend like this one? Like, wow, it's amazing what God's doing in people's lives, but same old me. You're not alone. Um, for me, I, I love the fall. Anyone else say fall is your favorite season? Or for those of you who are highbrow, autumn. <laughs> uh, favorite season? Yeah, I, I love it. I love, the, I love the leaves. I love the weather. I love the crispness. I, I love the being able to layer clothes again. I love not having to sweat everywhere I go. I, I love it. I love it. Um, I love the fall. But I have realized, thanks to years of journaling, I've realized that fall, even though I love it, Favorite time of the year. Fall is not always a great season for me in here and in here. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. I'm not sure if it's just watching you know, the cycle of life and, and everything that's growth and alive suddenly coming to an end and we go back into winter if it, if it just puts me in this place of like futility or something. Because if you know me, and if you've been around, you know this about me, that I'm a person who really tries to live out what we talk about here at Pathfinder. I'm a person who is trying to pursue a whole life in every facet. Uh, so for me, in my life, I'm regularly picking up new disciplines of, of you know, how, to, how to exercise and how to eat differently and how to take care of my body and, and how, to, how to heal my mind and bring calm to my anxious mind. And I'm looking at how to do relationships differently and better and wiser. And I'm picking up new spiritual disciplines and practices to keep my relationship with God growing. And, and I'm trying to figure out how to be a better manager of my finances and, and how to be more generous along the way and, and to manage my money God's way, right? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it looks like to live a life of purpose. I'm always on the pursuit of a whole life. And there's always something new going on in my life. Just ask me, like, Dion, what, 
what are you doing now <laughs> as you pursue a whole life? There's always something new. For the last four months, in case you're interested, it has been daily cold plunging and ashwagandha supplements. It's, yeah, yeah bless you. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, anyone else on the ashwagandha train? It's supposed to be amazing for you. And so I've been trying it for months. Yeah, I, I got a friend back there. It's supposed to be amazing. And, and maybe it is, I don't know. But, but so I do these things and, 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 and then fall comes. And I think this is what's going on. Fall comes and I watch everything around me just kind of going backwards. Even though it's beautiful, it's, it's going backwards, back to, back to death, back to dormancy. And there's something in me that says, Dion, who are you kidding? You can do, you can do all of this stuff. And do you think it's really gonna change any of this? I've been thinking a lot about a woman uh, from the Bible from Mark chapter five. Uh, the beginning of her story, some of you know the story. The beginning of her story just goes like this. A woman was there, this is Jesus is traveling around in a crowd, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. So here's this woman, and she's got this physical uh, disease that she can't figure out. 12 years, just this problem that's not going away, but it's more than just physical. This is a, this is a life impairing thing. Because in that culture, to have a, a bleeding issue would have meant that she was ostracized from society and community. So not only was she suffering physically, but she was alone and she was cut off from spiritual community. I mean, this is a, this is a whole life pervasive, whole life affecting infirmity. And then it says, she had suffered, on, uh, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And for the last few months, this has just been going around in my head, this, this woman's situation. I think because I can identify with you know, being in the pursuit of healing and, and growth and newness. and That's such a big focus for my life. That sometimes I, I feel like the person who's you know, doing every, spending all my time, my, my energy, my money to try to get better. And, and this part just haunts me. And maybe it's because in part I can relate to it that you can do all that, but instead of getting better, it might actually make you worse. And the crazy thing is, I mean, she, she goes on and she meets Jesus and she touches him and, and she's healed. And, and the crazy thing for me is like, wait a minute, I, I know Jesus, I've met Jesus. I'm in regular contact and, and connection with Jesus. And yet sometimes this, uh, this just feels true to me. Maybe I'm not getting worse, but I do wonder sometimes, if I just sat around and did nothing, if I didn't pursue a whole life with so much effort, would I be in the exact same place? Does it even matter? Does, it, does that kind of intentionality, does it even make a difference? Now, now, maybe for you, fall is a great season. Maybe I'm bumming you out today. But here's what I can promise, regardless of how you are today, there are moments, there are seasons in your life where you feel stuck. Uh, maybe there's some internal struggle in your life or there's some temptation, there's some addiction or there's, there's something that, that you're just, you're drawn to and you can't, you, you can't break the chains and you're starting to wonder, am I too far gone to ever reverse course? Or for some of you, there's a situation in your life that, that is broken and it just, it's so degraded that you can't imagine it ever becoming well or whole again. And, and maybe for you, that's, that's not a situation up close. Maybe that's how you feel when you look around the world today. You look at the world and you say, this is such a mess. How is this ever going to get better? Or maybe for you, it's a relationship relationship that was once so important to you and so life-giving for you and now it's a relationship that's dead it's it's gone and there's no hope in your mind in your heart that that relationship will ever be resurrected that it'll ever live again See, there are all these moments in life when, when we feel stuck, when we feel like it, it doesn't make a difference. And I want to ask you, what are these words from Lamentations 3, what do they sound like to you 
Then, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Maybe when you, when you anticipate or, or you imagine yourself in those places where you're stuck, maybe these words sound a lot like wall art from Hobby Lobby. Like it sounds good, but maybe these words feel hollow to you today. Or maybe they feel more than hollow, maybe they actually feel hurtful because you're waking up every day wondering, God, where, where, where are your new mercies for me? And in some seasons, it feels like every morning just brings more hardship. Maybe these words actually feel hurtful to you. And here's what I want you to know about Lamentations 3. These sound like such bright and sunny words, like someone who's living on top of the world. And maybe if you're going through a hard season, you're looking at these words and you resent these words, I want to show you the context, the context of these words. This is the rest, uh, part of the rest of the chapter, backing up to verse 16. Jeremiah, the prophet, again, speaking about God, says, God has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I've been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity even looks like. So I say, my, my splendor is gone, and all that I had hoped for from the Lord, it's, it's, it's all gone. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Now, now Jeremiah, the one who wrote these words, um, he was often called the weeping prophet because he's a guy who's not naturally hopeful. And he's writing at a time of incredible difficulty. He's anticipating the destruction of, of the southern kingdom of Israel, of Judah. He's anticipating them being invaded and slaughtered. He's anticipating the temple, the temple of God being overrun and destroyed by pagan armies a way of saying that, that your God is dead, your God is defeated, he's, he's waiting, he's anticipating the carrying off of the brightest and best of Israel into exile and, and families being broken and, and just his whole culture being destroyed. He's, he's facing just something that's unimaginably dark and hopeless, so no wonder his soul is downcast within him. If, if you think of these words as only words that, that, uh, that we can speak in hopeful situations, this was a dark situation. And then, in light of this, that's when Jeremiah says, and he goes on, and he says, yet this I call to mind, and therefore, in the middle of all that, I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, even though all that stuff's going on, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. He he is my solution. He is the answer to all of my prayers. And if he's not showing up today, then I will wait for him until he does. In the words of of some of the New Testament disciples, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You are my portion. I will wait for you. So regardless of your circumstances, regardless of how you feel about your life, do you believe that these words are true for you? I I hope you do. And in fact, uh, I want you just to kind of push these words forward into a reflection. So I have some reflection questions for you um, that I want you to ponder here. How do you hope God shows up differently for you in the next season? If his mercies are new and his faithfulness is great, maybe you've been in a rough season or maybe it's been a good season, nevertheless, if he's your portion, if he's the one in whom you hold all hope, how do you hope God shows up differently for you in the next season? Another question I have for you is, how do you hope you show up in the next season? Maybe you realize that that God is showing up. There's something in your life that needs to change. This is the heart of of what biblical repentance is, by the way, of just saying, maybe I need to show up differently. Maybe maybe I need to change some things. Um, What about this question? In what part of your life do you need the renewing power of God the most? And only you know the answer to this question, but I'm sure you know it. 
I'm gonna give you just a second to actually think about answers to these questions. And I just want you to meditate on them. And maybe you don't get through all three, but maybe there's one that jumped out to you and, and I want you to come up with answers. So just, just take a minute. I think Julie's gonna play for us. Just take a minute and reflect. These questions are also in the Pathfinder guide for this week, so make sure you take a look at that and, and keep meditating or reflecting or, or journal out answers to these questions. I think these are really important questions. If you're still struggling, if you're still struggling to believe that God can and, and he will move in your life, that he can make you new, I wanna share with you just uh, one, more, one more thing. There, there was another prophet who lived around the same time as Jeremiah, his name was Ezekiel. And Ezekiel, also living in hard times, was a man who was given visions by God, just really spectacular visions. And one of the visions that he was given by God was, was pretty terrifying. Ezekiel saw a valley of, of dry bones. And this shows up in even some Christian songs. There's a song that's a, kind of a newer song right now that we sing that talks about this. But he saw this, this valley full of dry bones and, and what had happened in this valley was, was a massacre in battle, armies being overrun. And, and here's what's important about these dry bones is that it's not a valley full of recently dead people. It's a valley full of no life, of long dead people where there's no life in the tissue anymore. It's, it's just dry bones. It means death has happened and it happened a long time ago and there is no hope. But God so badly wanted Ezekiel to be a person of hope living in a hard time and, and he wants this for you that he gave Ezekiel his vision and, and his vision was that God then by his spirit, by his breath, breathed into this valley and these bones started to put on tissue and sinew and muscle and skin and, and eventually these bones lived again, not as a skeleton army, it's not Halloween yet, but, but as a living army. He, he undid the power of death and he brought an entire valley full of dry bones back to life again in his message to Ezekiel and through Ezekiel to the people of Israel is I know sometimes it looks bad, but with a word, with a breath of mine, I can change everything. I can make you alive again. I can make you new again. And, and if this isn't enough for you, remember this is exactly what God did with his son Jesus. Jesus who was left in the grave. And on the third day, God said no. And, and he breathed life into him again. So I want to ask you today, if God can do this with a valley of dry bones, if, if he can make them alive again at a breath, at a word, at a command, if God can speak new life into a, a long dead hopeless situation, do you believe, do you believe that God can do that in you? If so, say amen. amen. And, and do you believe that if God can speak to Jeremiah in this horrible time when, when his teeth have been crushed by gravel, when, when nothing in life is going good, but God can say to him, my faithfulness is great, you can trust in me, my mercies are new for you tomorrow, I will see you through, I will not abandon you or forsake you. If, if Jeremiah, if you can see that in Jeremiah's story, can you believe that for yourself? If so, say amen. And if these stories of life change compel you, if they speak to your heart and you look at those stories and you say, wow, God moved in people's lives and, and that's amazing. 
But if you can believe that that same God wants to move in your story today in the way that you need it the most, say amen. More than that, I want you to stand up right now with me. Because each year um, we make sure we pray this prayer. You should have got it on a card when you came in. And so you can take out this card or, or these words are on the screen. And I want you to pray with me, beg God, ask God to move in your life and bring change. We pray together. Lord, as you carry out your work all over the world today, don't forget about me. Although I sometimes fight against your transforming hand in my life, don't give up on me. Save me from the prison of standing still, of stagnating, of being the same person today that I was yesterday. Make me new, for I believe you have all the power needed not only to change the world, but to change me. So change me, free me, forgive me, teach me, discipline me, stretch me, fill me, and grow me so that you can more fully use me to bring your goodness to all who surround me. I humbly ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us and being a part of our online Pathfinder community. We pray this service blessed you today. If you're new or you've been here for a little while, you can find helpful links to resources in the description below or at our website, pathfinderstl.org. While you're there, you can also find our message podcast, which allows you to listen to a weekend message on the go. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll never miss out on a weekend message from us, including this weekend's. Yeah. And as you listen to these stories of life change, did anyone come to mind who you think would benefit from one of these stories or this, this service as a whole? That may have been a prompting from the, the Holy Spirit to share this service with them. Uh, so hit that subscribe button, like, comment. Every interaction helps uh, the message of Jesus spread. It's so true. Also, finally, if you'd like to support our ministry with a gift, you can do so at pathfinderstl.org slash giving. It's your generosity that allows stories of life change like today happening here every day. So thank you so much for your generosity. Yeah. May God bless you this week and we'll see you next time.